below. In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the aero balance for an FSAE race car. Before we begin, we should define what aero balance really means. We may sometimes refer to this as the center of pressure. However, it's important to note that in 3D, this phenomenon does not really exist. On each race car lies a center of pressure, at which point the moments due to the aerodynamic forces all around the car are zero. This can be split into an x, y, and z coordinate to understand where our center of pressure is longitudinally, laterally, and vertically. For most calculations, we care about the longitudinal aero balance, or distribution of the car's downforce between the front and rear axles. This balance plays an important role in the handling characteristics of a vehicle in high-speed corners, as more front downforce distribution will give more grip to your front tires, causing an additional yawing moment into the corner, which can contribute to high-speed oversteer. We will begin by importing our geometry. Here we have cleaned up our geometry and added name selections to all of our important aerodynamic surfaces. More information on pre-processing and name selections can be found in the External Aerodynamic Analysis of an FSAE Car using ANSYS CFD course within the ANSYS Innovation courses. Make sure to take note of the axis system that is imported from your natural CAD model. Many different CAD software packages have different standard orientations. In this case, the vehicle has Z running longitudinally, X laterally, and Y vertically. The standard SAE vehicle axis system is different from this, with Z running vertically, X longitudinally, and Y laterally. However, for the purposes of this video, we will follow the axis system imported from the CAD software. If we think about this in the context of our aerodynamic forces and moments, our downforce will be acting in the Y direction, our drag will be acting in the Z direction, and our side force will be acting in the X direction. Similarly, the pitching moment will be about the X axis, the yawing moment will be about the Y axis, and the rolling moment will be about the Z axis. This axis system will be important later on when we go to calculate the aero balance. Additionally, the origin of our system is on the front axle, which makes our moment calculations easier later on. We will then mesh our vehicle in this state and solve. More information on this can be found in the same external aerodynamic analysis of an FSAE car using ANSYS CFD cores within the ANSYS Innovation courses. To calculate the aero balance of our vehicle, we will first open the solved case file and data file in ANSYS Fluent. We then will navigate to the Reports tab where we will select Forces. Here, we want to create two output parameters, one of total downforce, FY, and another of the total pitching moment of the vehicle, MX. To create the downforce parameter, we select forces, set y equal to negative 1, and then select all name selections that are part of the car. Be careful not to select any inlet, outlet, ground, or other wall boundaries. We can repeat this to get our pitching moment by selecting moment, origin 0, 0, 0, and then axis 1 for x. This is finding the moment about the front axle which we said earlier is where our origin resides. From here, we can navigate to the Named Expressions tab under Setup, where we will select New. We can name this first expression COP Location for Center of Pressure Location. We will start by taking our Pitching Moment Output Parameter and then dividing it by the Downforce Output Parameter. This will give us an answer in units of meters that represents the distance from the center of pressure to the front axle. As you can see, the distance is quite far rearward. We can then create a second output parameter called Rear Downforce Distribution. We will input the named expression that we just created, multiply this number by negative 1, and then divide our vehicle's wheelbase in units of meters. Multiplying this value by 100 will give us the percentage of the overall downforce on the rear axle. Now that we know the location of our center of pressure along our wheelbase, we can return to ANSYS Discovery to visualize this location on our vehicle. First we will create an X-cut plane. We then will create a point on this plane. The height does not matter as we are only looking at longitudinal distance. We can then dimension the point to the origin based on what we calculated in the previous step. This point now represents our center of pressure. Similarly, the center of gravity of the vehicle can be plotted. The relationship between the aerodynamic center of pressure and center of gravity of the vehicle is critical for good vehicle handling. If the center of pressure is in front of the center of gravity, the car will become more unstable, causing the rear wheels to lose traction more easily when encountering side forces, such as those in a turn. 
Conversely, if the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity, the rear wheels will have more traction, resulting in a stabilizing effect that resists spinning, otherwise known as anti-yawing, but the front wheels may tend to understeer and lose grip first. When this process is repeated in many different vehicle attitudes and conditions, we can start to form an understanding of how the aero balance of the vehicle changes throughout a lap. This is a key input to any good lap time simulation. In Formula SAE, yaw sensitivity also plays an important role in the vehicle's handling. The characteristic large rear wing end plates of FSAE race cars contribute a large anti-yawing moment while cornering. For this reason, it may also be useful to calculate the aero balance due to the side force on the car, as seen during cornering, which can be done in a similar manner to the method used in this video, but requires a full car model simulation using a hollow cylindrical sector for the computational domain and geometry changes to account for steered tires and car roll.